Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody has a great start to the weekend. If you live on the Northeast, man, a lot of rain, a lot of rain. So I figured knock out my chart work, uh, knock out everything that I needed to get ready uh, for Monday and try to, you know, despite this washout this weekend, try to have a nice uh, relaxing uh, weekend. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, again, thank you very much for finding us. Number one, thank you for finding us uh, tuning in. Uh, all we ask is take a second, uh, click a like, uh, share, subscribe, come aboard. Uh, video broadcast goes out usually Monday through Thursday. And then again on, uh, the weekends, uh, if you are, uh, an avid viewer, okay. And you are thinking about pivots or wanting to try pivots. There's a link below, kick the tires for 30 days. Uh, you'll quickly see that there is an alternative to the quote unquote normal, uh, and you see if it's a good right fit for you. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, indexes continue to shine. Uh, S&P up 2.3% uh, this week. The Dow Jones up 2% uh, this week. And the NASDAQ up another 3% this week. Obviously, the continuation of the AI uh, revolution continues to be long and strong. You had uh, numerous uh, events. You had numerous PRs. Uh, this week from, you know, all the companies, right? You had uh, AI uh, collaboration between uh, 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 Apple and Google for Google's uh, Gemini. Uh, you had NVIDIA's uh, GTC conference that uh, spewed a whole, right? A whole bunch of headlines and different partnerships with every other company uh, on the planet. Uh, Avago Broadcom uh, also had... Uh, their moments as well. And the moral of the story is uh, I don't think this AI thing is a fad the same way that people were trying to discredit the whole, well, it's the internet. Who cares about the internet? It's not like the internet's going to be part of our lives a year from now, right? Going back to 99, 2000. And yet here we are on the internet. So the AI revolution is here. Uh, companies are already seeing it's much more cost effective to have a, a robot, RT2, D2, and C3PO, and everybody else that having Bob, Jane, uh, Harry, and Dick. That's what she said, right? On their payroll. And we're going higher, right? We're continuously to go higher. Uh, this week, we saw uh, a, a, a major, major move and a major technical reclaiming of shares of NVIDIA. And I want to start off there. Right. So NVIDIA had their big conference. And like we said a couple of minutes ago, um, a lot of really cool things. They introduced a whole bunch of different chips, some very, very expensive, some very, very powerful. But the most important part is as shareholders or investors, we want to talk about what happens next. So if you guys remember, and I think pretty much everybody does. So NVIDIA went on this incredible run, finally broke out above this 505 level on November and the end of November, and just put in an incredible move uh, into this push into the 974 level. And Friday, uh, Friday, we'll talk about the significance of Friday in a second, but the difference between the push here in 974, which was about a month ago, versus kind of what we are now, is very, very clear. We had this parabolic move without even a downtick, right? From the time that it reclaimed uh, 824, which was on November, no, November, on, on uh, February the 23rd, we had a move of literally 150 points up in about four days. There was no distribution. There was no resting. Uh, there was no, you know, inside days. The stock literally went from 823 to 974 in five, six days. That was called the blow off top at that point, right? The blow off top, uh, it was exhausting, but hey, Investors deserved it. Traders deserved it. Why is it different this time? Okay. Why is it different this time? Somebody asked me in the webinar, I think it was Marcella, asked me on, on, on Friday, well, why is the move now, a potential move now to 974 different than the last move to 974? Well, again, you had a six-day 
six day run up with absolutely um, no pullback, no distribution, no rest. And the reason why this is a little bit different, you know, Nvidia went on a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Monday will be a 10 day distribution. So that's almost two weeks of the distribution of the previous run up to 874. This is your rest. This was the distribution. This was your investors, uh, buyers, and sellers getting comfortable at those levels. And this is now, even with despite the 974 kind of quote unquote blow off top of that point, this is now the highest close in this whole formation, guys, right? We haven't seen a higher close than this. And Friday, we saw an absolute magnificent move, right? Magnificent move right off the open, taking out the previous day's high. And the difference between the difference between also n notable difference between what happened on Friday versus that quote unquote blow off top week was we are seeing massive seven figure bets for next week, right? Not for you know a month from now, two months from now. We saw, I mean, I I saw at least five or six seven figure bets between the nine eighty and the thousand dollar calls ending this week. Now, why is that significant? It's only a four-day week, right? Friday, the market is closed. It's Good Friday. So they are betting millions of dollars that NVIDIA will hit between $980 and $1,000 a share on a four-day weekend. I get it. I don't care how big the fund is. And obviously, these are all fun, uh, fun bets. I don't care how big the fund is. To put a, a million-dollar bet, $2 million bet on a four-day rental, as, the, you know, as, again, borrowed from the, you know, from the show Billions, from uh, from from Bill, right? From, from Wild Bill, they are not uncertain. We'll see what happens there. I think if there if you get any weakness on Monday, I uh, use that weakness, especially into rising support, uh, to try to you know get a, you know get your shares into rising support. Because if it holds that rising support and they trap those eager the video can't go up higher crowd and goes red to green and confirms Friday's highs. Well, we'll see a move right back to the 3.8 highs of 974. I think you have everything going on here. Technically, you have a, an incredible uh, close. Again, highest close in the whole formation. You have institutional money flow coming in with million-dollar bets. And you've got a four-day work week, which, again, makes it more aggressive for a potential move uh, into that direction. So NVIDIA uh, definitely poised. Is it possible there's a little bit of profit-taking uh, on Monday, and there's an inside day, of course. Again, it's a stock market. Nothing has to happen, but overall, technically, uh, looks uh, very, very good. Tesla. Let's talk about Tesla. The stock is broken, guys. The stock is broken. So since the, we lost the 50-day moving average, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, you, you kind of know I've been pretty much sell bias in this whole thing. We've been finding spots in this thing to go long. But these longs, man, I tell you, if you don't take your profits into these longs, they take it right back the next day. So we talked about it on, I think it was on Wednesday's video. Uh, it got above the 175, gave a nice move. Um, I sold 75% of my uh, position after hours, up another two, three dollars. The next day and Friday, you know what happened, right? It gapped up, gapped up to you know to uh, after hours highs and went straight down. And guess what happened the next day? Next day was Friday. Again, more data coming out of China. The things are not great. And the stock now is absolutely broken the way it's been absolutely broken uh, ever since it lost the 50-day moving average at 230. Again, please tell me again every single time Kathy would uh, keeps on buying shares. Okay, right? Okay. Now the key for Tesla is the bottom range here on this reversal candle, on the 318 reversal candle, right? That started this little four-day little run-up. If you guys notice, the lows from Friday are exactly the same lows from the 318 candle. Uh, is once if it starts building below this 318 candle at some point, it doesn't have to be Monday, but if it starts building below this 318 candle, yeah, we should start testing back uh, the lows from uh, the lows from uh, 313. Speaking of Kathy Wood, right? I've cracked her. I, I really have cracked her investment thesis. Number one, and I, and I say this I, I, at first, I said this completely in tongue in cheek. She loves buying stocks that blow up on earnings. Okay, right? She does that. But she also loves buying IPOs the first day. So Reddit came out and, uh, you know, Reddit came out. It was a little bit, I think it was oversubscribed. I forgot how much it was. It was oversubscribed. 
it went to as high as 58 and it closed lower than its opening print uh, on Friday. Does it mean the stock is going lower? Does it mean it goes higher? It doesn't mean anything, but for a sophisticated fund manager, she really does have a lot of FOMO. Um, you know, Reddit, it, and it also the funny thing about Reddit, it felt very romantic. There was something romantic about Reddit traders buying Reddit uh, on the IPO. So hopefully this thing kind of bottoms out, uh, bottoms out, starts giving us a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of a data, uh, a little bit of supply, a little bit of demand, but you can't possibly feel comfortable trading a stock that has no data the first two days. Like, what's your entries? What's your exits? You know, you can't just uh, buy and sell a stock based on feel, or can you? Right? Everybody's a good guesser until they're not. So it's very, very important, guys, especially on IPOs. They're sexy, they're new, they're the brand new toy. But the point is, when you're trading, and, and again, people who don't understand all these unnecessary lines that people who are you know 20 years old, 22 years old tell me that they're so uh, unnecessary, keep this in mind. I'm trading for 25 years. I've been using these lines that are unnecessary. Yeah, they're pretty necessary. Um, so people always mock things they don't understand. But all these lines, they do represent supply and demand. These are areas where technical buyers meet emotional sellers. And these are emotional sellers meeting technical buyers. This is why these stocks stop at those technical lines more chances than not. If you don't understand that there, well, then again, you're trading blind. Uh, going into this week, again, our job, uh, again, is not to try to figure out or uh, try to understand why the market is doing what it's doing. Just enjoy it, right? Just enjoy it and start looking for ideas uh, that are um, coming out of channels. So let me give you guys some ideas that are coming out of channels. Obviously, again, is this the week NVIDIA runs to 1,000? All right, let's see. I think there's a shot. I think there's a legitimate shot. All it needs to do is reclaim Friday's highs, start building off Friday's channel, and there's a shot. We see that 974 uh, highs. Again, massive, massive call buying coming in for the 980s, the 1,000s. We even saw uh, for the four, first week of April expiration, 1,050. So definitely, definitely watch uh, that. Obviously, we talked about Tesla. Let's definitely keep an eye on Tesla on the bottom channel this week. Again, it held it on Friday's gap down. So I want to watch this. Arm is a name that for all you guys who trade Arm, it's not the easiest trader. Let's be honest. It really is not the easiest trader um, compared to AMD, compared to NVIDIA, uh, the other semiconductor names. This one's a little tough, but you can see a channel that is playing out here, right? You can see the channel here, uh, for the last couple of weeks, it's pretty much got rejected off the same area. Guys, watch ARM this week, especially if NVIDIA starts pulling everything up uh, into a push into a thousand. If ARM could finally get above the last two weeks of channels, I think there's a shot it could finally start uh, start waking up here. But again, not the easiest stock to trade. I would always rather trade NVIDIA. I would always try to trade uh, AMD over that. Uh, but definitely, definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, Google had a really nice day on Friday. It's very, very close to uh, taking out and challenging the January highs. Uh, we saw a bunch of 152.50 calls uh, coming in uh, for this week's uh, expiration. Uh, look at a name like PHAT, Fat Bro, Fat, right? I don't know what this thing is. It caught my eye. It had a big, big run up uh, in February, retraced the move, and this is the highest close now in this whole formation. If this thing starts getting above this channel, maybe it starts its next leg up. And one name that um, I started watching, I, I logged back into the webinar on Friday, uh, was Forge. If everybody, you know, everybody kind of follows uh, not what Kathy Wood is doing, but what Nancy Pelosi is doing. Obviously, her her trade in, in Nvidia has been out of its mind. Uh, apparently, she is a, a private investor in a company called DataBrinks. I uh, put up $5 million. The only pure play on Databrinks is this uh, FRGE. I got the wrong symbol. FRGE uh, Friday started taking off. There was also uh, obviously some option uh, activity as well. So traders started finding this FRGE on Friday for you guys who are, uh, are small, uh, small cap uh, traders. Uh, and the stock had a massive, massive rally after the close because people picked up wind on it. So for all you guys who are long, especially in the webinar, we started watching this thing, the two, 232, 233 level. 
Guys, stock is up a dollar. Congratulations. A lot of you guys uh, are going to wake up Monday or even soar after hours. A phenomenal, phenomenal move. Congratulations. So it looks like this is one of the very few pure plays on uh, Databrinks uh, going into this week. I'm sure other traders will find other, others, but this was definitely the first one uh, to take advantage. So let's talk about Friday's, uh, Friday's channels. Uh, obviously, not a lot of things confirmed, but the ones that did actually did work. Uh, Tesla never confirmed. Apple, nice little move on Apple. Uh, it got rejected initially in that 60 to 72, uh, 50s level and went all the way back down, took out uh, 70, 80, and went right back down to 70. Congratulations for all you guys who took it. But this was obviously the big day, uh, the big one. I still have a runner, a very small runner, but I do have a runner uh, over the weekend. Just in case NVIDIA wakes up, 927 needs to confirm, and NVIDIA went absolutely nuts. And that was obviously uh, the trade of the trade of the day, right? It went from 927 all the way up to uh, 948, and uh, you know, down a couple of bucks after the close, a little bit of profit taken. But I'm telling you guys, this thing. If this thing confirms Friday's channel, uh, this thing will go. Uh, Sono did nothing. AI went down like 30, 40 cents. I don't think they did anything either. And ARM didn't confirm. Yeah, it was basically NVIDIA, but NVIDIA uh, did its thing. So that's it, guys. That's it. Let's see if this is the week NVIDIA can get to 1,000. Uh, let's see if it starts pulling up the other semiconductors. A bit, big night and day difference between uh, NVIDIA and, for example, AMD. AMD had that big blow off top and never came back. Uh, and honestly, I'm going to watch, uh, you know, I'm going to watch AMD to the downside this week just in case it can't rally because if NVIDIA starts pulling up and there's a big potential overnight into that thousand push and AMD can't rally, that's a perfect, that really is a perfect pair trade. You could be long NVIDIA, short AMD and possibly win on both sides. So again, guys, if you are interested in pivots, uh, there's a link below. Uh, kick the tires for 30 days. Uh, it is pretty, pretty neat. Uh, again, nobody on the planet trades it but us. And the most important part is it's definitely a breakaway from the normal. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great, great weekend. And with God's help, I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.